Hey guys, Pro 1701 here, and today we are going to be reviewing Planet of Fire Episode 3. This was a patron request from one of my patrons, Alice. And uh, Alice doesn't ask for a, a request very often, so I definitely wanted to make sure I honored it. So this is me reviewing Planet of Fire for the first time. I've never seen it before. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying it as I'm going through it. I don't own it, so I'm having to source it online. The quality of which isn't perfect, but it, it's still good. Still uh, very enjoyable. I like Anthony Ainley in this story a lot so far. I really enjoy at the beginning of part three when he's basically forcing the Doctor and some of the other people into the room where they basically sacrifice everybody to flames. Is Anthony Ainley so gleeful about it? He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know there's nothing you can do about it, Doctor. Just the the joy the Master's taking. Not so much in killing the Doctor, but at watching the Doctor in agony that other people are about to get killed, too, and can't do anything about it. That's just some nice acting on Anthony's part. I'm still having trouble adjusting to the Doctor not wearing his coat. Something about the fifth Doctor not having not having his coat on just bugs me. It feels It looks wrong. It feels wrong for some reason. <clears throat> uh, but Davison's acting is great. <coughs> I actually like toward the end when he gets really cross with Turlo because he thinks Turlo, when he finds out Turlo is tied in with everything going on and he's basically like, what are you hiding from me? What do you, you know, if there's anything you're hiding from me, our friendship is at an end. You know, he's very on the point about it. You know, if you do not tell me everything that's going on, we're done. And yeah, I, you have to remember sometimes with the fifth doctor that he's not this, friendly, happy-go-lucky young doctor. There is a bit of the first doctor in him, that grumpy old man still in him. And the fifth doctor does have a bit of a temper at times. And when he's in a mood, he's in a mood, much like the first doctor. Even when uh, Turlo makes that one comment when the doctor is examining the little scraping, he's like, you know, that wouldn't be funny even if I wasn't already in a testy mood, you know? Um, so it's interesting. Some of the, I guess any seems like in this in this story, anytime he's wearing the, the glasses, he's grumpy. <laughs> Uh, Perry continues to annoy. I just, oh, Perry in this one. Oh, I don't know if it's uh, Nicola's acting, the writing, a combination of the two, but man, she's really irking me in this story. Um, luckily, we don't have to see a lot of silver painted chameleon in this one because that's really ridiculous too. Uh, I like uh, seeing... The people on there learn who Turlo is, that he has the symbol, and them following his command, and then learning to trust the Doctor, seeing their reaction when they walk into the TARDIS. That was pretty neat. Uh, the one guy who with the mustache, I still think he's a good actor. He doesn't impress me quite as much in this episode as he does the first two, but he's still good. Uh, the effect, the this one doesn't have, it seems like to me, a lot of location work it seems this episode seems more studio bound so i wasn't quite as wild by that because i like the location filming for the story but this one's very studio bound and that's kind of mm, you know it's classic doctor who in studio what can you do um and it's kind of mm, for that but yeah i enjoyed the story i like the cliffhanger when he mentioned it being the control box i'm like that's awfully small the master's not in that is he i was and so when she actually pulls the top off and he's like in there, but he's small, I was like, okay, I guess he is in there. They, they did mention it's the control box. So that makes sense. I'm curious why he's so small. <clears throat> did he purposely shrink himself down just to control Chameleon that way? Or did something happen to make him that small? Did he, did he cross someone and that was their punishment to him was to shrink him down and lock him in there? <laughs> is there an unknown adventure with the master that we haven't seen where he just got... He got screwed over by somebody really bad. Or somebody <laughs> took it upon themselves to punish him for him doing some shenanigans. That's that's the master story I want to see. Somebody get one gets one over on the master. <laughs> I'd enjoy that. But yeah, part three's it's fine. Uh I think it's funny how Perry runs away from him, but then waits and hides. And then when he shows up, takes off again. I think I think you should have just went straight to the TARDIS. But I like the fact she's got him locked out somehow, even though you would assume he had a key and could just get in. But maybe she somehow hit the uh, the double lock, double whatever they can do on the TARDIS where it's completely locked and you can't get in, dead bolted or deadlocked or whatever. Uh, maybe somehow she hit that by accident. I don't know. 
Uh, it, like I said, it's okay. I, the story still hasn't quite lived up to its reputation for me, but who knows, maybe part four will wow me over. I'm still looking forward to seeing the um, special edition at some point. The special edition looks like it could be really good and doing a comparison between them. I have added this story to my Amazon watch list because uh, I do want to get that eventually so I can see it in better quality. Uh, anyway, that's been my thoughts on Planet of Fire Part 3. I enjoyed it, but it's it's just it's so much like, eh, I enjoyed it. It wasn't, wow, this is great. Top tier classic Doctor Who. It's not that. Um, but I'm enjoying it so far. So what do you think of Planet of Fire Episode 3? Comment down below and let me know because I always enjoy hearing from you guys. I want to give a thanks to Alice for recommending this. I have been wanting to watch Planet of Fire for a while. I also want to get a shout out to two of my top tier pa patrons, uh, The Fifth Doctor and Stephen Crane. I appreciate their continued support. I do have a P.O. box down in the description below if there's anything you would like to send me. I do have a link to my Patreon down below if you would like to support me that way. And a link to my Amazon wish list, which I update regularly, is down there as well if you'd like to check that out. Most importantly though, thank you for watching. <laughs>